We're here today to talk about bite wing x-rays. Good bite wings are important. It may be five to seven years or more between full mouth series, and patients rely on us to manage disease and health in this time interval. To properly detect caries and periodontal disease, it is essential to capture open contacts between teeth and maxillary and mandibular bone levels. This is easier said than done, of course, Every year, our radiology faculty and staff assist students in obtaining the best possible bite wing x-rays for their test cases and board exams. We're sharing some of our techniques with you on this video. I'm Dr. Lola Giusti, coordinator of radiology services at Arthur A. Dagoni School of Dentistry in San Francisco. One of the things I see students doing quite frequently is placing the x-ray sensor or film in such a way that it is not aligned with the arch. It should be parallel with the lingual surfaces of the teeth so that the x-ray beam is perpendicular to the sensor. Another way of saying the same thing is that the beam should come through the contacts of the teeth 90 degrees to the sensor. You will notice that the sensor is oriented quite differently for the premolar and molar images. Basically, you will try to align the sensor parallel to the central grooves of the molars in the molar bite wing. Here's an example of what happens when the sensor is not parallel to the lingual surfaces of the teeth. All of the overlapping contacts are closed because the sensor was not placed correctly. Sometimes you'll need to take vertical bite wings so that both maxillary and mandibular bone levels can be captured adequately. In this horizontal bite wing, the mandibular bone level is missing. In a vertical bite wing, bone levels would be featured. Keep in mind which image it is that you are attempting and use the notch in the red platform to position the sensor between the molars or the premolars that you would like to image. This will help you to position the sensor properly in the arch. This is Dr. Lin Wong, and her tip for better bite wings is the smile technique. Just looked at this bite wing, and another problem with it is that the lower premolars are not imaged adequately. In order to properly position the sensor and holder for the premolar bite wing, you can verify that the sensor is properly placed by having the patient give you a big smile with the teeth together. If you squat down and look through the plastic circle, you'll see which teeth will be imaged. This is much harder to do if you're standing up straight, especially if you are tall or if the chair is not raised up. But if you use this tip, it is possible to obtain bite wing x-rays that look like these. You'll notice that it's not always possible to open all of the contacts at the same time due to tooth position and arch curvature. But if between the premolar and molar bite wings you can see what you need to see, you'll be covered. This is Willie, one of our radiology techs. He's going to show you how to open contacts on bite wings. First, you can identify the area you would like to see better by pointing through the contacts with your finger. You can see that this angle may be different from the angle shown by the metal rod. You can also use a Q-tip to trace the contact and line up the central beam of the x-ray tube head with the Q-tip to help you get the best angulation. You can also do this with a piece of floss. This is June, another of our radiology technicians. June's trick for opening contacts is to use a 10 degree downward angle. As before, you'll be deviating from what the metal rod indicates and you will no longer be parallel to it. Remember to keep the collimator aligned with the sensor in the middle of the plastic circle or you'll get a cone cut on your image. The angle for opening up molar contacts is first to try from the mesial and for premolar contacts from the distal. The 10 degree downward angle compensates for the lingual inclination of the lower teeth and really opens up contacts more easily. This is Dr. Ella Madavi. 
She would like to tell you how to manage tori when you're taking bite wing x-rays. Foam is flexible and thin, so it may have advantages in these situations. The rigid digital sensor will not distort your images, however. For smaller tori, try to maneuver the sensor under the tongue and have the patient close very slowly. A vertical position of the sensor may be helpful, especially in the premolar area. If you attempt to position the sensor as you normally would, you may find that the patient cannot close completely. But if you place the sensor farther toward the middle of the mouth and ask the patient to close very slowly, you can often see the patient fully closed on the x-rays. Christina's tip is to remind you to be careful with the digital sensor. When your gloves or the sensor barriers are wet with saliva, they can become slippery. At that point, it is easy to drop the digital sensor, especially when you are changing the position of the sensor holder. When the sensor is dropped, the ceramic coating of the sensor can develop a crack that allows saliva or other fluids to affect the electronic elements inside the sensor. The images taken by that sensor will start to degrade, as shown by this radiograph. Christina wants to remind you to go easy, breathe, and don't drop the sensor while you are taking your images. Dr. Miriam Robbins and all of the radiology faculty and staff are here to assist you with taking images as well as interpreting them. Good images are integral to good treatment plans and good care of your patients.